Automatic Service Training Course Basic Theory. At present, a variety of VTRs are available, from the 8mm and Betamax for home use, to the 1 inch Omega machine used for professional applications. Except for the 1 inch Omega machine, all VTRs produced today use video cassettes. Sony pioneered the cassette age in video by introducing the U-Matic in 1970. First introduced as a home video format, U-Matic's popularity quickly spread in a number of different fields. Today, U-Matic machines, like the business-oriented VO and VP series and the broadcasting-oriented BVU series, are used extensively throughout the world. This program describes U-Matic servicing techniques and the fundamentals of the U-Matic system. There are two main differences between a video tape recorder and an audio tape recorder. The biggest difference is in the bandwidth used for recording and playback. Another difference is the fact that a video cassette recorder requires synchronized control. The signal bandwidth for audio signals is from 20 Hz to 20 kHz. For video signals, the bandwidth is from 50 Hz to 5 MHz. Therefore, if you tried to record video signals in the same manner that audio signals are recorded, factors like the 6 dB per octave playback frequency response, relative speed, and head gap width would adversely affect playback to a great extent. Let us first look at the playback output of the magnetic head. The head output level is determined by the difference in magnetic field strength at both terminals of the head gap. In this diagram, the magnetic field strength at each terminal of the head gap is phi1 and phi2. Head output reaches its maximum when the reverse polarities of phi1 and phi2 are equal. Conversely, minimum head output occurs when the normal polarities of phi1 and phi2 are equal. If head output curves are drawn as shown here, the residual magnetism curve for the tape shows a differentiated form. Next, let's see what happens when the magnetic recording wavelength on the tape is compressed. When the gap width is fixed and the head output reaches the maximum, the reverse polarities of phi1 and phi2 are equal, as mentioned earlier. If the recording wavelength is shortened, the head output is raised to the maximum because one terminal reaches the positive peak and the other terminal the negative peak when the reverse polarities are equal. When the recording wavelength is further compressed, the level is reduced. If gap G and recording wavelength lambda become equal, phi1 and phi2 will be equal, making the head output zero. This relationship is the same even if the gap width is altered. Therefore, the gap width can be used to obtain the shortest possible recording wavelength for playback. The narrower the gap width, the shorter wavelength that can be obtained. However, for mechanical reasons, there is a minimum width beyond which the gap cannot be narrowed. If the tape speed relative to the head V is calculated using the playback frequency F, and wavelength lambda in the formula V equals lambda F, a situation is created where the shortest recording frequency is wider than the gap.
If the distribution of residual magnetism on the tape is E sine omega and the gap is G, the aforementioned relationship can be expressed using this formula. Since V equals lambda F, the following expression can also be created. Cosine in both these expressions indicates the differentiated distribution of magnetism on the tape for playback output. The output level is determined by sine. If pi g over lambda is relatively small, in other words, if the frequency is low, the playback output is proportional to the frequency. That is, if the signal frequency is doubled, the output is also doubled, creating a curve of 1 octave per 6 dB. The peak occurs when gap width g equals lambda times 2n plus 1 divided by 2. In this case, the sine component equals 1. Low frequencies separated from this peak can cause noise in the playback because of low playback levels. Therefore, a minimum frequency must be determined. The actual value of this minimum depends on the tape, but it is generally a value 12 octaves lower than the playback output peak. Thus, the usable bandwidth is determined beforehand. When gap G becomes an integral multiple of lambda, the sine component becomes zero, and the head output also becomes zero. Frequencies higher than the initial peak can cause problems that can result in lack of playback ability. Therefore, the minimum frequency for playback is determined by the gap width. If the tape speed relative to the head, V, is determined, the maximum frequency for playback can also be determined using V equals lambda F. Therefore, to increase the maximum frequency, you can 1. Increase the tape speed relative to the head, or 2. Reduce the gap width. The maximum frequency for VTRs is approximately 300 times that for audio, so it is obvious that the gap width must be reduced and the speed increased. Minimum gap width is determined by mechanical limitations. For the U-Matic, a gap width of 0.85 microns is used. Therefore, the tape speed relative to the head must be increased. The speed required for the U-Matic is roughly 9 meters per second. The tape speed used with audio compact cassettes is 4.9 centimeters per second. This means that VTR tapes must run at a speed roughly 200 times that of audio tapes. Therefore, if a standard 60-minute audio cassette were used for video, it could only contain about 18 seconds of recording. This is why video heads revolve and why the heads record diagonally across the widened tape width. This is a rotary head unit. Vertical scan VTRs were used until recently by broadcasting companies. The track length with these units was limited by the width of the tape. Therefore, a number of tracks were required to reproduce a single screen frame. By making the tracks diagonal, as in the helical scan system, the length of each track was increased sufficiently to allow one video field to be recorded on one track. With audio compact cassettes, the head remains in the same position and is therefore referred to as a stationary head. Let us now compare the tape speed used in the U-Matic system with the relative tape speed. 
The relative tape speed V for the U-Matic system is calculated using the formula shown here when the tape direction and the direction of drum rotation are the same. Here VT is a tape speed of 9.53 cm per second. F is the drum rotation frequency, which is 30 Hz for NTSC or 25 Hz for PAL, and R is the drum radius, 5.5 cm. If these values are substituted into the expression, relative tape speed V becomes 10.26 m per second for NTSC and 8.54 m per second for PAL. Therefore, the relative tape speed is roughly 100 times the linear tape speed. Because the playback bandwidth is limited, low bandwidth playback is not possible during normal bias recording. The bandwidth is therefore compressed for recording. For this, frequency conversion is used instead of voltage conversion, requiring the use of frequency modulation. Using frequency modulation, a 1 MHz bandwidth can be converted into an 8 MHz bandwidth. Helical scan heads move across the tape diagonally. Since tape width has its limits, each path of the head across the tape must end at some point. Helical scan recording uses one track for one video field. Therefore, there is always one place on the screen where one track must switch to the next. It is at this location that disturbances are likely to appear. Thus, this signal disturbance location is placed in unobtrusive portions of the screen, the lower portion in particular. The distorted location is placed in the vertical blanking area, which is not displayed on the screen. Therefore, it is necessary to synchronize drum head rotation with a video signal. This is the second main difference between VTR tapes and audio tapes. Generally speaking, the following differences can be seen between video tape recorders and audio tape recorders. These differences are based on the fact that there is a great difference in signal bandwidth. Audio tape recorders use a stationary head that records using a bias method, while video tape recorders use a rotating head that requires synchronization and records using frequency modulation. These differences mean that videotape recorders are much more complicated and require much more advanced circuitry. VTR circuitry consists of the following five basic sections. 1. Video signal recording and playback. 2. Audio signal recording and playback. 3. Servo block for drum, capstan, and reel motors. 4. System control block and 5. Power supply block. As mentioned before, a different process is used to record video signals than is used to record audio signals. In the U-Matic system, the F modulated Y system is combined with a down converted color system. The following is a description of these systems. One of two frequency modulation systems is used to record video signals on magnetic tape. The direct FM method modulates composite video signals as they are input. The Y FM method divides the video signal into Y and chroma signals uses frequency modulation on only the Y signal and uses a separate process for the chroma signal. The following is a description of the YFM method used with the Sony U-Matic system. 
frequency modulation of the Y component is performed using a low frequency carrier. Generally, when performing frequency modulation, the sideband component expands both above and below the carrier to such a degree that a very wide bandwidth is required. Energies at the sideband component concentrated near the carrier frequency are remarkably attenuated as they move toward the outside of it. The reduced difference between carrier frequency FC and non-modulation frequency F enables the bandwidth to be compressed. In the U-MATIC system, the lowest sync tip modulation frequency FS is 3.8 MHz, and the highest white peak modulation frequency FW is 5.4 MHz. This way the required bandwidth can be greater than FC plus or minus F. And when the frequency modulated signal on the magnetic tape is recorded or played back, even if the upper sideband is not transmitted, the limiter circuit can reproduce it during playback. Using these two methods, the recording bandwidth can be used with optimum efficiency. As you know, the chroma signal is obtained when the 3.58 MHz and 4.43 MHz color subcarriers for NTSC and PAL are orthogonally phase modulated using R-Y and B-Y signals. The YFM signal is frequency modulated from 3.8 MHz to 5.4 MHz, so the chroma signal component is overlapped with the YFM signal. Therefore, these signals cannot be recorded directly. Low band frequency conversion is thus used for recording because playback would be impossible due to losses in the playback mode in spite of its high band conversion. Next, let's look at the frequency for low band conversion. The chroma signal has a bandwidth of plus 0.5 MHz to minus 1.3 MHz but since all that is required for most television purposes is plus or minus 0.5 MHz, Y and C signals are separated and that portion of the bandwidth taken out. The frequency for low band conversion must also be above 0.5 MHz. If the horizontal frequency is expressed as FH, lower converted chroma signal frequency FCL is given by FCL equals 44 FH minus 1 fourth FH for NTSC. Then, when an FH value of 15.734 kHz is substituted in this formula, FCL becomes 688.362 kHz. A balanced modulator is generally used for frequency modulation. The resulting output is fed to a low-pass filter to remove unnecessary portions of the upper sideband so that the result can be converted to low band. The numerical value of the oscillation frequency Fx of the crystal oscillator is the sum of the lower converted chroma signal frequency Fcl and the chroma signal frequency Fc. Before getting into a description of the mechanics, let us review the basic configuration of the U-MATIC system. The U-MATIC system uses a tape with a width of 3 quarters of an inch and records using a rotary two-head helical scan system. In addition to the video tracks, there are two linear audio tracks and a control track for a one-half VD signal used to control the drum head. The tape runs at 9.53 centimeters per second with a relative tape speed of 10.20 meters per second for NTSC and 8.54 meters per second for PAL. Two head helical scan recording pulls tape from the supply reel of the cassette and wraps it diagonally around the rotary head 
so that the tape comes in contact with roughly half the circumference of the drum. Tape speed is fixed using the capstan and pinch rollers, and the cassette take-up reel is used to take up the slack. Except for the fact that the head revolves, this system closely resembles that used in audio tape recording. In the upper drum, two video heads are mounted 180 degrees from one another. Each half turn of the head records one field on the tape. This rotation is controlled by the servo block to be described later. In NTSC, each half turn, since the vertical frequency is 60 Hz, takes 16.7 milliseconds, which results in 1800 revolutions per minute. In PAL, the vertical frequency is 50 Hz, so each half turn requires 20 milliseconds, which is 1500 revolutions per minute. The portions of the tape that the video, audio, and control heads traverse are important VTR standards. The path the video heads traverse is called the tape pattern, and if this pattern should differ from the standard, the resulting picture can be adversely affected. When playing back a tape using the same machine that made the tape, there is no problem, but difficulties may occur when using a different machine. This is referred to as compatibility. The adjustment performed to ensure the tape paths are compatible is called tape path adjustment. By making the tape contact area with the head slightly more than 180 degrees, the video signals recorded by heads A and B will overlap slightly. This is to prevent distortion in the signal during playback when switching between heads. This redundant portion of the signal is called overlap. Before, we talked about the importance of synchronizing the head drum and the video signal. The drum servo is used to control the rotation of the head. For the drum servo to operate, it must be able to obtain information on the rotation status of the drum. For this purpose, a pulse generator is built into the drum. The pulse generator is built into the upper drum and consists of a revolving magnet that is part of the head and a coil which is built into the lower drum. Each time the drum makes one revolution, the magnet passes above the coil, generating a pulse. The phase and frequency of these pulses can be used to determine rotation speed. The drum servo control is divided into speed servo and phase servo blocks. The speed servo is built into the drum and controls drum speed using two speed pulse generators. The pulse servo is used to match the drum rotation phase to that of the input video signal. To do this, phase comparison is performed on the phase of the pulse output from the drum and the one half VD pulse from the input video signal. The control voltages from the speed servo and phase servo are added and sent to the drum motor control circuit. The capstan servo consists of a speed servo and a phase servo. The speed servo is used to ensure that the tape moves at a fixed speed and operates according to the output from the DME built into the capstan motor. During recording, the phase servo controls tracking by matching the phase of the DME countdown signal and one half VD signal using playback control and one half VD phases. Three basic errors can occur between the drum and capstan servos. First, an error in drum rotation speed can occur. 
This can alter the length of a field, causing what is known as skew on the television set. Second, track shift can be caused by a difference between the tape pattern and the drum phase. This reduces the playback level. This can be adjusted using the tracking control during playback. Third, jitter can be caused by varying drum rotation speed. Reel control can be divided into two categories, that for playback and recording, and that for fast forward and rewind. There are two basic reel motor systems. The one motor system in which a single motor is used for both supply and take up reels, and the two motor system in which each reel has its own motor. Both methods have exactly the same functions, the only differences being how power is applied to the take up reel and how tape tension is handled. In one motor systems, power is applied to the outside circumference of the reel table by an idler and tape tension is handled mechanically. In two motor systems, each reel table is driven directly by its own motor. In a threading helical scan system, the tape must be wound around the rotary head. In open reel systems, this is done manually, whereas in cassette systems like the U-Matic, it must be done mechanically. These are called threading systems and usually consist of three parts. The first is the cassette compartment. When a cassette is inserted, the lid opens and the cassette is placed on the reel table. Then the tape arms begin to move. The tape is pulled out from the cassette and placed in the FR stop position. FR stop is the abbreviation for fast forward, rewind, and stop positions, and indicates the position of the tape when any of these modes is used. Finally, the threading ring rotates to wrap the tape around the drum head. The U-Matic gets its name from the fact the threaded tape resembles the letter U. There are three lines of U-Matic tape decks, the VO series for recording, the VP series for playback, and the BVU series for broadcasting applications. The video recording circuitry to be described here exists in all U-Matic models except those in the VP series. This is a block diagram of the video recording circuitry. It consists of an input selector, AGC circuit, and YC separator. After the YC separator, luminance and chroma signals are processed separately. Using the clamp circuit, pre-emphasis circuit, and frequency modulator, a YFM signal is created from the luminance signal, mixed with the fixed band chroma signal, and supplied to the video head. The chroma signal passes through an ACC, a balanced modulator, and a low-pass filter to become the fixed band chroma signal. The carrier added in the balanced modulator is provided by the crystal oscillator. Let us first look at the input selector. The U-Matic has two BNC connectors for video in and one 7-pin connector for dub in. There is also an 8-pin connector for TV in. The desired input can be selected using the switch on the front panel of the unit. the AGC circuit. 
This circuit prevents overmodulation. Normally, when input is encountered that exceeds the white peak level based on the sync tip level, it is automatically switched to the peak AGC using the white peak pulse insertion method. The YC separator. The video signal is divided into the Y signal and the chroma signal by the YC separator. For PAL and CCAM, this circuit consists of a 4.43 MHz trap and bandpass filter. Clamp circuit. The clamp fixes the DC voltage at a sync tip. This makes it possible for sync tip carrier frequency FS of the modulator output to be fixed at 3.8 MHz. The pre-emphasis circuit. Recovering a frequency modulated wave can adversely affect the signal to noise ratio in the high band. To prevent this, the range from 800 kHz to 2 MHz is emphasized by 6 dB per octave. The white clip circuit. This circuit prevents overmodulation caused by excessively high levels. The FM modulator. This circuit is used to perform frequency modulation on the Y signal. A frequency modulator employing an A-stable multivibrator is used because the frequency displacement is increased with respect to the carrier frequency. The following is a description of the chroma signal processing. The chroma signal output from the YC separator is supplied to the ACC circuit. ACC stands for Automatic Chroma Control and is an AGC that operates based on the burst level. The crystal oscillator. This crystal oscillator produces a carrier so as to obtain a fixed band converted chroma signal. Carrier frequency FX produced by this circuit is the result of the addition of the fixed band chroma frequency FCL and the chroma signal frequency FC. 4.27 MHz for NTSC and 5.12 MHz for PAL. The Balance Modulator Using a balance modulator, the chroma signal is frequency modulated. From this output, a frequency component referred to as FX plus or minus FC appears. The Low Pass Filter this filter extracts FX minus FC from the chroma component output from the balance modulator. The output from this filter is mixed with the YFM signal as fixed band chroma signal FCL and supplied to the video head. This is a block diagram of the basic video playback system. The signal picked up on the A and B channels of the video head is processed into a continuous signal by the switchers and mixer, and this signal is fed to the Y and C processing circuits. In the Y circuit, the YFM component is filtered out by the high pass filter, passed through the limiter circuit, and fed to the demodulator. The demodulated Y signal passes through the de-emphasis circuit and video dropout compensator and is then remixed in YC form and returned to its composite video signal. In the C circuit, the fixed band chroma component is removed. The signal then passes through the ACC circuit, which is followed by frequency conversion. The chroma component is removed from this output signal when the bandpass filter is at 3.58 MHz for NTSC and at 4.43 MHz for PAL. The carrier for the frequency converter is produced by the VCO and is driven by the error voltage from the phase comparator in the APC loop. It is the same frequency as when recording, 4.27 MHz for NTSC 
and 5.12 MHz for PAL. The first step involves the switcher and mixer circuits. The video head output from the A and B channels appears alternately in each field. This is the circuit for creating a continuous signal. The initial processing of the Y circuit is carried out by the high pass filter. Only the YFM component is removed from the combined YFM and fixed band chroma component mixer output. The limiter circuit. As previously explained, this circuit controls the level fluctuations due to changes in tape head contact. This is an essential circuit for reproducing the lost upper sideband during playback. The FM demodulator. The YFM signal is converted into a Y signal by the pulse counter and delay line type demodulator. De-emphasis. During recording, a pre-emphasis function is performed, which requires a counter-effect de-emphasis function. The overall effect on the spatial frequency characteristics is to reduce noise in the high band by flattening out the frequency response. The DOC circuit. Because the video track is extremely narrow, small particles of dirt and dust on the tape can be the cause of signal loss during playback. This signal loss is known as dropout, and the purpose of this circuit is to compensate for this. The Chroma Playback System Circuit. Output from the mixer is fed to the low-pass filter. At this point, the fixed chroma component is removed. The ACC Circuit. This circuit performs AGC for the bass and treble in the same way as when recording. The Frequency Converter. The balanced modulator performs the same function as in the recording circuit. The bandpass filter. With the NTSC frequency at 3.58 MHz and the PAL frequency at 4.43 MHz, only the chroma component is removed from the frequency converter output. The chroma signal is then mixed with the Y signal to recreate a video signal. The phase detector. Chroma playback output contains a jitter component caused by the tape transport. The chroma signal is processed by the frequency and phase modulators to eliminate the jitter component, but if left in this state will cause a deterioration in the color. The burst signal produced after frequency conversion and the reference signal, 3.58 MHz in NTSC and 4.43 MHz in PAL, produced by the crystal oscillator, are phase compared and the error in the output is corrected by the VOC. The jitter component is removed and the FX is altered. This phase comparison circuit is known as the phase detector. The FX produced by the VCO is fed to the frequency converter and is again phase compared to complete the APC loop. When passing through this loop, the output chroma signal phase is always fixed and is therefore known as the auto phase control, APC. The switching regulator performs the function of high frequency switching, high frequency voltage transformation, and re rectification. Due to their compact nature, high performance, and convenient absence of a voltage selector, all the models since the Type 5 series have been fitted with switching regulators. There is no difference between the VTR audio circuit and the ATR audio circuit. The fixed head system is fitted with high frequency bias recording and AC elimination. The basic block structure looks like this. There is one more channel that is a duplicate of this one. The 
playback only VP series is not fitted with a mic line amp, recording amp, or bias erase circuits. The system control. When the VTR is suddenly changed from the forward to the rewind mode, the tape could break. To avoid this problem, the change to the desired mode is performed smoothly by a systematic process. It is a major function of the system control block to perform this operation. The system control block also protects the drum from condensation and the tape from slackening and controls the system at other times such as when the tape comes to the end. A sensor is fitted to each mechanical part in order to carefully monitor operation. The monitored information is transmitted to the system control block. The sensors detect the startup and completion of every mechanical operation before the unit moves on to the next sequence. This is an example of the system control's flowchart. Items inside the circles are operating modes. When any of these commands are selected, the unit changes from the mode in operation following a set sequence to the selected mode. The time required for the stop command, for example, depends on which mode is in operation when the stop button is pressed. Changing from the forward mode, the fast forward mode, or the rewind mode all require different time intervals to bring the tape to a halt. The editing process. The video track on the tape runs diagonally. The NTSC track is 0.085 millimeters. The PAL VO track is 0.105 millimeters. And the BVU track is 0.125 millimeters. All extremely narrow. Just as for audio tape, effective tape splicing is close to impossible. To avoid the need to actually cut the tape, a method of joining pictures electronically has been devised. This method of electronic editing is known as assemble insert. Tracking and phase alignment are referred to as phase adjustment. To get the correct alignment, the tape should be stopped slightly in front of the edit point using the video playback mode. Recording is performed from the RF switching time point of the portion to be edited. The time interval before phase adjustment takes place is known as pre-roll time. The pre-roll time for the VO5850 in NTSC is 5 seconds and in PAL is 10 seconds. Care must be taken when editing because any interruption in the CTL signal during pre-roll time prevents phase adjustment from taking place. Assemble editing involves backspace editing by recording over video, audio, and CTL signals from the edit point. Using this method, phase adjustment begins automatically at the start of recording from the RF switching point, but to stop the process, the stop button must be pressed in the same way as when interrupting regular recording. For this reason, the next edit point should be slightly in front of where the tape stopped and should be set where it is free from signal. The insert edit function inserts the selected video and audio signals between the programmed edit start and edit finish section. The CTL signal is not recorded because the pre-recorded CTL signal is used in the insert edit process. The distinguishing feature of this method is the smooth way in which the end edit point and the RF switching point are combined to merge with the already recorded section. It is also different from the assemble edit because it doesn't record the CTL signal and therefore the insert edit process should not be performed on blank tapes. When using the insert edit function, the CTL signal is used as it was recorded and the signals across the whole width of the tape cannot be erased, as under normal recording conditions. It is only necessary to erase the replaced parts of the video track that run diagonally. An erase head is fitted to the drum a little in front of the video head for erasing across the width of the video track. This is called a rotary erase head. A 
tape counter system is incorporated to monitor the amount of tape used. The tape counter function can be performed by mechanical counting, electronic counting, and or a time code device. An electronic tape counting device is used in the Type 5 and BVU-800 series. This time-based linear counting method is more accurate than the mechanical method when using one half VD to count the playback and CTL signal. The display is derived from recorded signals and so this function does not work for fast forward, rewind or playback when using blank tapes. A mechanical counter is incorporated in the Type 5 and Type 2 low-end models. The display only shows relative values and is not directly related to time. A timecode can be used if an optional timecode generator and reader are connected to the BVU series. This records individual and absolute addresses for each frame of each track in the vertical blanking interval of the video signal. A broadcast type system is used only in the PAL type UMATIC for improved performance. The FS values of the sync tip FM carrier and the FW values of the white tip FM carrier are both raised by 1 MHz. The FCL carrier frequency of the fixed band chroma is also raised from 685 kHz to 924 kHz, and the basic horizontal resolution is improved from 250 to 260 lines. This is called high band and is indicated with an H next to the UMATIC logo. There are FCL differences between the high band and the regular low band, which means the tapes cannot be interchanged. If the tapes are mixed, color will be lost during playback. The dubbing connector. When using a UMATIC machine, the input video signal gradually deteriorates as it is YC separated and the fixed band chroma is combined with the YFM. This is particularly true when dubbing because the video signal must pass through each process twice. Consequently, the deterioration is more marked. For NTSC at 688 kHz and PAL at 685 kHz, the same exchange of fixed band chroma in the VTR allows for the bypassing of the YC separation and chroma mixing of the frequency converter processes, thus greatly reducing signal deterioration. Attenuation occurs very easily when signals are transmitted because the YFM carrier frequency rises from 3.8 MHz to 5.4 MHz. For this reason, a remodulator returns the signal back to its Y signal status before transmitting. This transmission of the Y signal and the fixed band chroma signal in one multicable is accomplished using the dubbing connector. The audio signal is not transmitted via this dubbing connector, and so it is necessary to connect a separate audio cable. Maintenance. Most of the mechanical parts in the video head have a limited lifespan due to wear. The parts that are subject to constant wear can become the cause of a fall off in performance. Sony recommends that after every 1000 hours of use, a thorough inspection should be carried out 
and worn out parts replaced. Periodic inspection will prevent worn parts from damaging the tape or causing a loss of performance and will give your machine a new lease on life. Refer to the service maintenance manual for more precise information on the periodic inspection. There is an hour meter built into the BVU series and the VO5850 to monitor the actual hours the unit has been in use. As a general guideline, the drum should be replaced at the same time as other parts when the periodic inspection is carried out. This ends the basic background explanation of the U-Matic video machine. For more detailed information, refer to the supplied user's guide.